Time to fix it yourself. Is that helpful? Okay. Um, so here's brass tacks. Someone in our company bought bad tires. If I don't address this, yes, Spangler might feel happy about some other things, but there's a reason why this is in all caps, right? So what are we going to do about that? How are you going to turn Spangler's feelings around about that? Ah, someone. But how are they to know that they've bought faulty tires? Mm -hmm. How is it their fault? There should be some sort of inspection when you. When yeah, you like an investigation or something. This is advanced food. I usually don't deploy this. Here's what you want Spangler to do. You want Spangler to fire Jeff. And there could be lots of legitimate reasons for that. You've been working for, with Joe for five years, and you're amazed that he hasn't been fired already. Right? Joe is not doing his job. He's careless with his job, whatever. For whatever reason, Spangler hasn't fired him already. This is an opportunity to get him finally fired. I want to convince Spangler to do that. So one thing I can do is point out, who did this? Joe did it. Yeah. Could you say that, because um, you know like when there's recalls on cars, mm -hmm. like they announce it, did you say that they had just announced a recall but Joe still bought from that company? Sure. Or what if Joe, even though he's a purchasing person, he doesn't do the inspections. They mm -hmm. have like a service place that's supposed to do the inspection, mm -hmm. and the person that inspected them didn't do it right. Okay, so does that connect to we want to get Joe fired? Yeah, because he didn't. Do so it. someone's getting fired. Yeah, but we want Joe to get fired. <laughs> Let's concentrate on Joe. <laughs> Joe's the one who signed the order to purchase that particular batch from that particular supplier and we want to get Joe fired. One thing that could get Joe fired is, did Joe ignore a recall announcement on tires? Well, if so, we want to include that in the report if our goal is to convince Spangler to fire Joe. Or if the tires were supposed to have been inspected, but they weren't, and Joe didn't verify that they were in fact inspected, that could get Joe fired. There's a bunch of stuff that could, re you know, because the whole point is if we are trying legitimately to convince Spangler to fire Joe, not just because we hate Joe because they didn't talk to us at the company picnic, but instead because Joe is not doing their job, then how did Joe not do his job in this instance that led to four accidents? Point that out. And the really advanced food would be how to do that and still maintain a positive tone. You know, how to be matter of fact, to be like, look, I'm just saying, this is what we need to talk about. Joe, blah, 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 blah. Right? Instead of coming across as, like, I hate Joe, and this is my opportunity to fire him, you wouldn't want to come across like that in the report, even if that was your implicit meaning. Yes? Do we have to fire? Like, no, 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 no. Let's flip it around. <laughs> Because here's the thing, and here's why this is advanced food. You remember my analogy? Hopefully you do, because hopefully you read my entire page of focused advice for the first committee progress email report, where I use the analogy of a working dog for a report, right? Working dog, your report is a working dog. It's not a show dog. Show dogs are essays. It's a working dog, right? So here's where your working dog could go completely off the map and cause a lot of collateral damage in this situation. You're training, uh, you're training a police dog, a SWAT dog, right? And you're training the SWAT dog to like attack men with guns because men who aren't in uniform, right? That would probably be important. <laughs> so men with guns who are not in uniform, what do we call those people? 
<coughs> potential criminals, right? People that need to be disarmed. Disarmed by police dogs attacking them. Right? Here's the thing. You got this whole band full of police dogs that you have trained to be like, yes, when we see a person who's not in uniform with a gun, we attack. That's what we do. Great. Perfect. That is their purpose, their statement of purpose, and you would train them and equip them perfectly for that. And then there's a hostage situation at a 7-Eleven, let's say. And so, here we go. Get all the dogs in the van. Drive over there, right? Park in the parking lot. You got the SWAT dudes and the this and the that. Oh, but also there are six um, off-duty cops and some undercover cops who are also there because this is like a hands-on deck. There's like 30 hostages at a 7-Eleven, so like everybody from the LPD comes out. You open up the van of your dogs, all your dogs come out. They start going towards the 7-Eleven, and then suddenly a whole bunch of them veer off. What are they going to do? Yeah, attack the cops who just happen to be out of uniform because you weren't thinking, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I should have, like, a, oh, by the way, part of the training. <laughs> right? Oops. Oops. So here's the thing. If your goal has nothing to do with Joe, and in fact, if you want to keep Joe around, like this was just an enforcement, don't say, Joe bought a bad batch of tires. Da 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 moving on, moving on, moving on. Right? Great. Your report just attacked Joe. Collateral damage. If you want to attack Joe, okay, make it mindful and purposeful. If you want to protect Joe, keep that in mind. Make sure that your report will not cause collateral damage for Joe. How could you do that? Yeah. Um, could you? I mean, for like the recall. I mean, mm -hmm. or I mean, not for the recall, but like, I don't know. If you mention Joe, anyways, it's gonna have. Yeah. Once you bring Joe into it, you got to deal with him. Yeah, because if you say like after a company investigation we found out that you know the tires hadn't been inspected in a year or something like that and since purchasing or something yeah what would be things that would explain I mean, why like, joe couldn't have known what yeah maybe they had the the inspection people do it and they checked it off to where he thought everything was dead but it was just somebody in that group that they knew to go but then it would veer away from Joe and go to an inspector. We wouldn't be yeah. talking to Joe anymore. But if the inspector is an outside inspector, yeah. then it's on the inspection company. Maybe Joe got bad info about the tires, right? Because it's a third party inspector or something like that. And how's about this? Let's just let's make it even more simple. No one inspects tires. When was the, when was the last time you bought one? In the future, think about it. You will buy tires. You'll go to Sears or Tire Warehouse or wherever the F, and you'll get tires. Are you going to inspect them personally yourself? You're just going to trust that, well, they wouldn't sell me these tires if they're going to kill me. So could you, like, suggest that we need to start doing this, like, yeah, maybe. a certain time inspection? Like, yeah. Like, so many months inspection sure. on the Sure. And time. so the do here would be uh, keep Joe, because, look, no one in our industry inspects tires. It's but just not done. More work. But, um... Authorize Hey, let's start up a testing program. Um, what would what would you as Spangler need to know to like actually feel comfortable authorizing that? Like if I just say, hey, let's do this. So approve it. That's not gonna cut it. What do you need to know? Um Yeah, but I mean, so if we're going to start inspecting tires, well, how much is that going to cost? I mean, even if we don't need to hire people, even if we don't need equipment, it's going to cost somebody's time, right? So that's money. How much is it going to cost? Um, and how's about this? And you could do a cost benefit. You could say, like, look, this is going to cost us an extra five grand a year, but as we've seen, even if it prevents one accident in ten years, that would be a wise, you know, that. And also, again, think about PR. Nobody in the industry does this except now us. That would only like that would not only 
like be a good investment to end up saving you money because you wouldn't lose, like you wouldn't have as many accidents that it would bring customers in because it would make you more reliable. Advertising, new customers. Yep, 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 yep. And let's bring it back to Joe. Who came up with this idea? Not sure why I did. Okay. Sure. <laughs> this is my idea. Awesome traffic manager again. You can say that like you brainstormed, like the company Joe brainstormed with the company. Or Joe something. and I met up yesterday to talk about this issue, and this is the solution that we came up with. Looking good for Joe? Yeah, now it is. But you get the my original point of like don't make your police dog training cause unintended consequences to people that you don't mean. It happens all the time in workplaces because people are not mindful of the consequences of what they write. Okay? So one thing to be mindful about is do I want positive consequences to come from to me from this well how am I going to write it so that everything that comes from me results in positive feelings do I want negative consequences to fall on other people well how do I do that how do I make it go or do I want positive things to happen to other people too or do I want to shield other people from negative fallout be mindful of that build it into your report or anything that you write. Yeah. 